you're gonna get wet so uh what's going on guys captain cody davis back again for another video this is going to be kind of a different type of video from what i typically post and we'll get into that it's going to be a special video to me you guys can see we are here in front of okeechobee fishing headquarters and for those of you that don't know um, on mondays this time of year uh mike is closed because this time of year is kind of the slow time and mondays are slow in general and it gives him a day off to go fishing but because he's a gangster and because he runs the best tackle shop around the lake in the country he knows it's may and um the flipping bite is going off on okeechobee and even though he's closed you know like they have like a break glass in this case of emergency he always leaves flipping baits for you just to come grab in case of an emergency so that's why we're here i may have texted him and told him that i need these so there's that but anyway while we are up here as you guys can see i do not have a boat with me i'll get in this truck and uh explain what we're doing before i get wet um so here's the deal guys we are heading up to go fish not lake okeechobee we're gonna go fish a lake that uh i'm gonna go out on a limb and say none of you have probably ever heard of before but it's a very special body of water to me uh, we're gonna be fishing a lake called lake saddlebag uh, up in lake wales florida and the reason it's, it's a special body of water to me is I've, really, I've been fishing it since I was eight years old. Uh, my grandparents actually used to live on the lake. And any of you that are familiar with the area may have heard, but years and years ago, I don't remember how many years ago it was, um, the whole lake actually flooded. They didn't have a water draining system or culvert system at all in place. It flooded all the homes, mobile homes, park models all around the lake. And everybody was pretty much forced to move out. Um, I believe the state came in and fixed the the water draining situation, putting culverts in to, um, you know, disperse water to other surrounding lakes. But, um, you know, so my grandparents obviously had moved, but instead of, um, you know, getting rid of the house entirely or the place entirely, uh, my, you know, us, I, while my grandparents lived there, me and my parents would frequently go up there and visit them. And I would actually spend, I think, two weeks out of, you know, each summer staying with them by myself and doing nothing but fishing this lake. So uh, we liked the place. We loved the place. So instead of selling it, my dad took it over, redid the entire place, and we've pretty much had it to ourselves uh, ever since. We call it the lake house. And my parents frequent it a lot more than I do. Uh, they're both retired, so they go up there every other month or every couple of months and just hang out. Uh, those of you that are familiar with the Lake Wales area, it's very quiet, small town, low key. And uh, my mom goes up there and sits by the water and reads her book. And my dad plants weeds in the yard so he has something to weed eat and pull and spray. And has something to do. And he fishes every morning and every afternoon. So um, <clears throat> it's a super cool place. It's just a small park model on a small lake. This, uh, this, th this lake is not big. The entire lake is probably the size of like Pelican Bay. Very clean water, surrounded by flat pads and needle grass. There is some Kissimmee grass on the main lake. And then you get into the lagoon, which is the small little basin, basically where the most of the homes are located, where our home is located. And um, yeah, it's just kind of some darker water with some flat pads and, and, and pontoon boats beached. So I really like it. It's very special to me because I've been I've spent a lot of time there and it's, it's really, really, you know did a lot of my uh, cutting my teeth as a bass fisherman because i would just my it was a small enough body of water where my parents would just say take the boat and go and i'd be gone all day and um you know i really learned a lot about fishing and uh I, it's i go back as often as i can because it's one of those things right like you're constantly evolving and growing as an angler and it just seems like every time i go back i, I look at the water differently and i approach it differently and I get to try new tactics and presentations and baits and stuff. And uh, I don't know, I've just, I've grown up fishing there and I love it. There are giants in the lake. I've caught a few eight, sevens, eights and nines out of there. Um, I've lost a couple of tens. I know of a 15 that was caught out of there. But when it comes down to it, if you have a 14 pound day, you knocked them down, you knocked them down. Ugh, knocked them, I don't know what I was trying to say there. Knocked them out, knocked them dead. I think I was trying to say both those at the same time. But um, yeah. We're loaded up. We don't have a boat. We've got camera equipment. We've got energy drinks. We've got tons of rods, way more tackle than we need. And uh, 
you know, something else that's cool is we get to fish. I'm going to be getting to fish out of my old boat or my, my dad's old boat. My dad bought a 17 and a half foot Ranger when I was, I was probably 10 years old and we still have it. Uh, my brother actually recently redid the entire boat and uh, sea decked it and stuff. And he, we keep it up there at the lake. So get to go fire that old two stroke up and go out on the lake, hopefully. So uh, it's raining now. We got about an hour and a half drive up there and hopefully tomorrow we're going to be fishing. So uh, come along and uh, I'll take you guys to my lake house. Okay, current situation. My uh, hour and a half drive has turned into over a two hour drive because I had to drive through a monsoon. Horrible lightning, terrible wind, blinding rain, the whole nine for the whole way here, really. As soon as I left my shop, the, the you know the sky fell out so now i'm a quarter mile from my turn to where i turn into our neighborhood and this is what i'm sitting in so it's dead stopped i've been sitting here for probably 20 minutes at this point there's a wreck right up here but i mean i'm i'm right there and this is my luck i don't think the wreck's bad i would never be complaining if it was <laughs> Because I always say, it could be worse. You could be the person in the wreck. So thankfully, I wasn't in that. But here's the deal. I'm about to pee my pants. I'm three iced teas deep on this car ride, and I got to go. Also, just driving and listening and just daydreaming, I realized I have all of these fishing rods in this truck, and I forgot my big easy rod which no Floridian should ever go anywhere without their big easy rod, and I, I did. And uh, that's one of the best baits to throw on our lake here, and I didn't bring it. So I'll, I'm upset about that. I guess I can make my frog rod work, but you know, we're bass fishermen. We gotta have a rod and reel and a specific setup for everything. So no big easy, no big easy setup, literally putting my truck in park, for traffic and probably going to wet my pants in the next 10 minutes but i'll check in once we get to our estate so we made it well we're in the neighborhood we finally got off the highway um i have not wet my pants yet i have still not came up with a big easy rod but we are here there actually wasn't even an accident there was a giant tree in the road because we had just missed a giant tornado that just ripped across Route 60, apparently. Crap everywhere. My mom said they got hit really bad with a storm and the whole place was shaken. Well, that's because they were a quarter mile from a tornado. So I guess we got super lucky there. But uh, we are here while we're in the neighborhood. We are going down the street. It's actually our place straight across there where you see the boat. But I can't really talk because I'm about to wet my pants, so I'll check in with you guys once I get into the place. Okay, so we are unloaded. I did not wet my pants. It was close though, but I, they, they missed getting slammed by a tornado by literally a quarter mile. But it still looks pretty nasty out. We're definitely going to get some bad weather tonight. Hopefully it's not too bad tomorrow morning to go fishing, but give you guys a quick run through of the estate here. It's actually some kind of cool stuff in here. Show you guys some pictures real quick. Don't mind my mom sitting here eating spaghetti because she because she doesn't want to be on camera. But we got some oldies but goodies here. <laughs> actually, that's my ugly nephew and me. That's actually at Tory Island Campground when I was I don't know how old I was. Me and the OG Denny Brower. At the class, dusty. at the classic in North Carolina. No, I think that might be at the Walmart in Clarkston. Oh, it, oh yeah, it you probably know. actually was. I don't remember. We got some. I think this was my first bass, actually. I believe. I wasn't very excited. This was definitely my first fish at Disney World. Flowers. <laughs> Don't mind all the other pictures, but it's probably that, gonna be blurry because it's not bright enough. That was it, right here. My first bluegill at Magic Kingdom. And then these are just different fish that have been caught here. 
There's some big ones in this lake. There used to be. Yeah. Don't mind yeah, the shadow. But, but all of these were caught in here. Well, me 500 years ago. But there's a nine out of here. And I was 90 pounds less. And then, oh, watch out, Luca. I don't know if I got any more. I got some oldies but goodies. That was that same nine. I think Bunch you caught that fish twice. Yeah, I've caught that fish. I actually caught that times. fish twice. Here's me with long hair. Me, Sean, and my ugly nephew again. And, uh, there's, yeah, there's a bunch of them. There's you and Fox. Yep, me and some buddies out here catching some giants. Yeah, some of the old ones got taken out because we had to put some new ones in. Yeah, I was trying to think of that. So the water in this place is up pretty high and to give you an idea of how high the water is you guys can see that white pipe down there it's a foot and a half underwater from the top and usually there's two and a half feet of water sticking out of the water right here on this point um, i usually like it when the water's high because the fish usually follow it real quick in this lake like as it's coming up they'll just push right up to the bank oh i might have a bite Like that that fish was on the bank a look at this done caught me a fish on a weightless senko i'm not too proud look how clean they are up here they're just like totally different than an okeechobee bass and this is what they all tend to look like up here on like the winter haven chain and these deep clear water lakes but you'll catch a lot of them in here that big and then they, they drastically usually go up in size from there. And I think it's because, you know, in this side they're still feeding on little glass minnows and things. But then there's really nothing else for them to eat in here except for bluegill. So then they have to hopefully, you know, eat enough to grow to be three and a half, four pounds where they could really start eating some of those bluegill. But little guy. But the fish. Weightless Senko. Got him? Giant. Giant. It's number. It's number two. Number two. Oh yeah, on the board. <laughs> you know, in football, when sometimes they gotta call an audible. Well, we ain't playing football, but that's what we're doing. So, those, here's the deal, guys. I, um, I guess I should stay out here so you guys can see me for a minute. I, um, I don't know what's going on with this little lake. Uh, me and my dad fished it for, we went out, came back in, went and ate some food, went into town, came back and went out in the afternoon. Perfect conditions, right before a storm. Uh, you name it. I mean, what you would want for the for them to bite in this lake, we had it, and they just weren't doing nothing this time around. Um, I'm really unsure as to what's going on with this small lake. I mean, it gets a lot of pressure from a lot of people that live on it, and then just a lot of people that winter down here. I think a lot of people that live here don't really know any better, and I think they're eating a lot of them. But with that being said, I did see a couple of five and six pounders, and saw one like almost eight, just free swimming and you know pitched a couple baits to them they wanted absolutely nothing to do with it had nothing rising on a frog nothing on even hardly anything on like a weightless senko really strange and uh, the second time we went out was you know later in the day the sun was higher and the the amount of brim you know bluegill shiners i mean there's so much bait in here so i think it's a mix of they are well fed they're they're fed up they're highly pressured and they're just educated. They're smart in this clean, clear, you know, this clear water here. And on top of that, they don't really have much structure to hold on. There's no brush, there's no reeds. It's just some bank grass and flat pads and that's about it. And even out in the middle of the lake where it is deep, it's all gradual. It's a gradual slope. There's not a steep bank or anything like that. So I don't know, I, I, I've crushed them in here for years 
and it was just a really tough trip. So, calling an audible, I sent a text to a buddy of mine, who a lot of you may or may not know. He is a Florida hammer, and uh, my buddy Garrett Rockamora, probably one of the best, if not the best fisherman on the Kissimmee chain. Uh, I always joke he catches a 10 pounder like every weekend. That's a little exaggerative, but he's, he's, he's just a hammer. And uh, he is a guide. So a lot of you that are watching this maybe have fished with him through me. I send, I send all my guide trips, anyone interested in fishing up here in the central Florida area to him. And uh, he's, he catches them. So I sent a text to duty free tomorrow. You want to hit Kissimmee before I go home? And he said, yeah. So <laughs> I've never fished with him. I'm super excited. I've never fished on Lake Kissimmee. I mean, I, I I was out there one time that I won't even count. It was a fishing trip. So, uh, yeah, we're packed up. We're heading to Camp Mac to meet Garrett. And uh, apparently we're just going to go flip some grass and see if we can not catch 30 pounds real quick. I feel like 30 pounds to him isn't even cool anymore. He catches it so much, even in tournaments. But that's about it. Hopefully I didn't wake up my neighbors who... Uh, whose driveway I'm parking my truck at, but we're gonna head to Camp Mac. See you guys on the water. I'm sure if this is your home ramp and you fish tournaments out of here every weekend, you kind of get used to this and take it for granted, but I don't. So I think this is the coolest boat ramp in all of bass fishing. Just true old Florida. I mean, it's completely canopied over with these giant old oaks with the moss and I don't know. I just think it's, it's such a cool ramp and such a good, cool feel. Got the boat ramp right here. Looks like they only got one ramp open, but got here a little early. I'm going to get my tackle together and uh, hopefully Garrett shows up. We go swing on some baggins. Big ass boil. <laughs> Thought it was a lot bigger than that. No, dude, that thing ate it like a freaking seven pounder. Definitely getting hooks at me. Just gone. Don't do it. If it ran to the pad, like, hey, I know. That's how I tell people. That's how Okeechobee 10 pounders are lost. Because if you'd have lost that, that was a 10. Well, not us, but other people. I feel like every tournament I fished on here, I just want to say they lost a 10. I'm like, shut up. Yeah, if you didn't like see it, it's almost kind of stupid to go. Like, ooh, that was over there. Is that a bass or tilapia? Where was it? Did it blow up? Yeah, it sounded like it. Definitely walleye. We're going, I guess. Like, we went for one day last year, and it was like it's just too much driving and too short. So I think we're just gonna go and spend two days. It is. Will they eat a swim jig through the pads? Especially in the. Oh, you. Out of there. I don't know if it was a gar or a bass. Look at how shitty that frog's sitting in the water. Look at the other one with him. There was another one with him. Lefty hook set. He throws some shit on left and some shit on right anymore. 
post spawn aff. There's a little one with him. Skinny. Walleye, eh? Okay. Done. And he leaves and we go in there and all of us had 30 pounds. Well, Jesse had like, I don't, Jesse left early. He was with Wired to Fish. Oh, it's a giant. I just threw right on top of you too. I just threw right on top of you too. Oh Banging. <laughs> I saw her shake pads and I was like, oh. GM. It's like a six, right? Seven? I don't know. This is a walleye, right? Walleye, eh? Is this how you hold them? <laughs> this is how the French dudes be. They'd be like, bonjour, <laughs> bonjour. And, oh. My was dead. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I need nicotine so bad. My buddy's like, here, throw one of these in. I'm like, I hear everyone just be like, oh, it tastes good. Yeah. I don't own one. I don't do one. Like, I probably hit a vape like, Ten times. That was always years. that was always the joke. BB blowing clouds. Yeah, I used to vape for no reason. Now I put these things in my mouth. Black abass. There's a school. Got him. That's going to be a good clip. <laughs> Ugly mother, but we got it. Punch skirt, dude. Dang punch skirt. Yeah, Raw feels good. Bro, look. That would have been a jig. That fish was in the boat. Yeah. I flipped in the whole the, the grass show. Yep. That's that corner. That corner's good. Just be jumped. Back in the like the old ones. We're backwards flipping right now. This fish heavy turn up like this fish. We're flipping <laughs> backwards. Just Imagine trip. That we're going down the shoal, like passing people like this. <laughs> What's going on? Y'all got them? Last Sunday in the one man, I got in school over here, bro. By a fish? Yeah. I flip about like that far back in the grass. I pick up. Like that? Damn it. <laughs> I was rolling. I'm talking about getting schooled, and I got schooled. You think that was a big one? Uh, I don't think so. Because that one stayed in there. Yeah. The other one went the out one the back I, door. I lost was out here. Oh. <laughs> and it was just a huge boil. All right, you guys, the first thing I need you guys to do is ignore the fact that I look like absolute trash right now. I am very tired and sunburnt, but also my allergies are kicking my ass right now. I'm not sure what's in the air, but uh, it's doing a number on me. Just took some allergy medicine and I am fixing to go to bed. But before I did, I wanted to close this video out for you guys. Um, 
Had a lot of fun fishing with Garrett. You know, I've known him for years. Uh, it was our first time actually getting to fish together, though. But it will definitely not be the last, and it will definitely not be the last time you guys see him here on the channel. Um, it was a relatively slow day. Uh, you know, it was a bit of a grind. But that's okay. You know, I had a ton of fun. Uh, we caught a few good fish, and I learned a lot. You know, um, it's just one of those deals where I encourage everybody to do the best they can to just fish with as many people as you can. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, what's really crazy is, you know, I, I tell everybody, I think Garrett is one of the best, if not the best fisherman on the Kissimmee chain of lakes. Uh, and just, he's just an outstanding angler all around. He's traveled fishing the bass opens. He knows everybody in the business. I feel like, you know, he, he's just a, he's a very, very good angler. And, um, you know, it's one of those deals where, he kind of bounces ideas off of me when he comes down here to Okeechobee because he's always like, you mean your fish don't do this or your fish don't do that because they do on Kissimmee. And it was my first time leaving Okeechobee to go fish Kissimmee. And I was doing the same thing with him. Just it's crazy how just an hour and a half up the road uh, makes such a big difference on how these fish behave, how they set up, how they react to certain things. I mean, like we were catching fish off of stuff that, I would never target on Okeechobee. And even so, like, those lakes up there, you know, we hopped around a bunch of different spots, a few different lakes. Everything looks so good. But literally, to me, everywhere that we fished the other day, I would have never have stopped my boat if I was up there on my own. So it was really cool to see how he approaches the lake. Um, how he presents his bait was even different a lot of times. We did a lot of flipping. And I picked up on a lot of things he does uh, that maybe he doesn't realize, realize he does that I'm definitely going to utilize when when fishing and flipping down here on Lake Okeechobee. But great dude, super fun to be on the water with, super funny, and just very, very knowledgeable. So I'm going to have all of his uh, information in the description below. If you're in the central Florida area or just the Kissimmee area, uh, you know, a lot of you know, ask me to go fish headwaters. I've yet to go. I send a lot of uh, you guys to Garrett to fish headwaters. He fishes there. He's very good with electronics, very good with live scope. We did a little bit of that. Caught a couple of small fish doing that. So uh, any of you guys that are just looking to learn that kind of fishing or just go fish in his general area uh, where he calls home, definitely give him a shout. I couldn't recommend him enough. And like I said, it definitely will not be the last time you guys see him here on the channel. So I'm gonna chug some water and I'm gonna go to bed to get rid of this allergy attack. I have to be on the water in the morning. But uh, as always, I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Tie lines.